I'd like to call the North Brantford Board of Education budget workshop to order at 635. Roll oh. call, Mary. Chairman Papaholt. Here. here. Vice Chair Alfredo. Here. Secretary Sienna. Here. Judy Bannon. Here. Zachary Canada. Here. Kim Dawson. Here. Victoria Alonso. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Scott and Martha. Scott and Martha, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do not be intimidated by the document sitting in front of you. There's a lot of information that's not seen for you to ask any questions, write down any questions. Uh, if you leave tonight and you don't have answers or something comes up on the way home, uh, this will give you uh, a format that you can go through and look at a number of things. We are going to use the PowerPoint. All of the pages are numbered, so it's probably easier for you to sit and go through while it's in front of you. Uh, Mr. Williams is here uh, to assist with the tech piece after retirement. He's still assisting us. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate that. Thank you. We do greatly. Um, the, at the last Board of Ed meeting, I gave you uh, the budget drivers, that one sheet. Uh -huh. And um, at the very bottom, it said the percentage increase for 24 25 based on budget, dri budget drivers was at 5.28. In the past two weeks, we've, we've narrowed this down and we'll walk through it. Um, so you'll have a, a strong indication of where status quo is and where we are at right now as an administrative team, whittling away at some of the things on this page. Okay? All right, so that being said, um, we're going to start with, if we can probably turn one bank of lights off, it would be easier to see. Um, and, I, and I'm not going to read this. You have this in front of you, but I just. That's not. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm old. I can't see. Good. Okay. Does everyone have a copy of this? They do. Okay. They all have copies, so as long as they can right, see yeah. it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and we can put it back on. But the first part of the narrative, we always start with our vision and mission. What you know is truly important uh, to the administrative team and to all students and educators in the district. And we walk through our, uh, our vision for you know being schools of excellence and how we're characterized, the mission of the public schools. Uh, and, and what we consider to be the non-negotiables as we move forward with all of the changes in technology and, and being good, good, good citizens in the 21st century. Next slide. Uh, our priorities, uh, we, we work diligently as an administrative team with uh, Dr. Welch and our uh, special ed team to put together things that we feel that cannot be compromised. And, we continue to work with the strategic planning of supporting staff and students around social and emotional well-being. You've been very supportive in the past of um, really beefing up our mental health team, making sure that we have um, mental health staff in place with everything we've gone through from COVID all the way through to, to today with what we can continue to struggle with. Um, student performance has always been a driving factor. This board uh, has communicated clearly with us about you know, certain things that we want to see improved upon. We're in agreement. We try to write our goals around uh, student performance and measure that so that you have uh, real data in front of you as we move through. College and career readiness, um, pathways and opportunities for all students in our facilities and infrastructure. As you know, in the past, we worked diligently to get a new brand new high school. There's a new roof going on in the BIS. Um, there's other upgrades when we get into capital that you'll see. Okay, mm -hmm. district goals, um, instructional vision, um, making think invisible. These are all things you've heard from Dr. Welsh over the last year. Um, our expectations for all learners and, and um, curriculum instruction, programming, all resources in uh, pre-K through now the uh, 18 to 22 year old program, so that's even expanded. And our PDAC professional development, increased opportunities using our um, excellence within our staff uh, and expertise to present um, to their colleagues, and that's been really well uh, received by all members. Our budget priorities, obviously we need funding to, to do all of these things. Um, refinement and training and, and our preschool model, we heard about that and the changes that we've made with, with preschool. Um, class sizes always uh, 
a high priority for us so that teachers are um, able to do what they need to do in class sizes that are optimal for learning. Comprehensive programming, K-12, we've expanded. We offer more now than we ever did uh, at every level, whether you're in an AP course or a college course or uh, if you need remediation to get the assistance that you need so all students are successful. Uh, professional um, learning and funding, resources, consumables, tech, everything that goes in with that. Uh, and the K-3, which recently passed. Reading legislation and curriculum, we're hoping that there's gonna be some changes. Uh, I know um, many districts were really disappointed in that process, didn't feel that we were heard in that process, uh, and, and that uh, they're looking to potentially pump the brakes on that, but we have to prepare, we have to be ready for moving forward with that. So the costs that will incur under this new uh, reading legislation. Okay. So student enrollment, this is probably one that you will not be able to see on the screen. So if you go to, I'll catch up with you as we continue to talk. Page six, Yes. Uh, the bot, very bottom line from 1552 uh, to 1558. We're, we're pretty flat in enrollment. Um, if you drive around town, I, I think that, you know, what I, the statement I make about new homes being built, um, there, there's construction, quite a bit of construction going on right now, and they're, they're large homes, um, and, and, and that's a really good indicator and sign of um, the market here in North Ranford. Uh, and I, I truly believe that, you know, your support in building that new high school, that's only going to attract young families into our community. Uh, so those are the, the enrollment numbers that's uh, simply moving grades forward a year, projecting and, and moving forward. Just curious, why are we projecting a change of 45, I can't tell what that exact number is, um, in first grade? Um, for next year? So, yeah. So right now, um, we have or this is not 91, we have 91, so we have 121 students in kindergarten, we have 91 in first grade and 134 in second grade. Okay. So then next year, the 91 is going to go to second grade where it used to be 134, because that was that bubble year after COVID. Okay, okay. So it's just how they're progressing. Okay. It's just not the zigzag, but it all kind of evens out. When gotcha. It just stood out, you well, know, I, I you. <laughs> declining by 45 students in grade one. Yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it adds back up when you look at the, the bubble class ahead of it. Which okay. Is Thank you. Sure. We actually have three bubble, I say bubble classes, but we have three classes that are above 129. Um, we have the 134, the, uh, a 129, uh, and a 142, so the three classes. Mm -hmm. So just tracking them through. And that's the exercise that we do moving mm -hmm. forward. Obviously, new students move in over the summer, and, and those numbers fluctuate, but usually not to any great degree. Any questions on that enrollment? Keep moving. Okay, um, page seven, and I'm gonna turn this over to Martha. This is the, the data, the numbers, and then as we go through, uh, last year, when we started this process, we came in at, starting with 8.91 last year okay so when we walked in here on the first night we were looking for 8.91 all right as you can see by the top increase for 24 25 we're right now at 7.72 mm -hmm. and as martha goes through this she'll walk you through all of the driving forces that got us to that 7.72 the biggest part that you have to just keep in mind is fund 25 over the last four years, how much we've depended on, and you'll see it dollar for dollar, line item for line item, where Fund 25 has helped over the last several years to the tune of $1.3 million. We're gonna bottom this thing out and have about $32,000 left in Fund 25 at the end of this year. The ESSER grants are coming to conclusion as well, okay? Smart Start grant concluded. So that being said, we're now in the process of backfilling. So just keep that in mind as we start. Are we looking for any grant replacement instead of looking to the town? 
So we'll get into all of that with what's available, what we've applied for, what we're going to apply for. Some of the things I spoke about at the last meeting for the air quality um, funding, we're putting in a, a grant for that. And then I'll have curriculum and special ed speak to that as we go through. Okay. Okay? All right, Martha, why don't you just okay. walk through. So our proposed budget is $35,979,375.36. Of that, almost 60% is made up of salaries, 15.5% is benefits, and 20, almost 25% is our teaching and learning and facility costs. Martha, I have a quick question for you. Instead of talking about proposed budget right now, can we also talk about the comparison of proposed to status quo? So status quo means we're running business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. I think we should right. start it's there at our foundation. In a couple. You'll see. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay. Just because it's going backwards in my mind, right? Like, okay. <laughs> I will make well, this is before we take anything out. So this is with including what we Well, it doesn't status quo mean we don't take anything out. Status quo yeah. means you're running at a baseline, right? And then a proposed budget means you're adding to that. Right. So we're, we're going through the same format that we did last year with what we started adding with what we wanted to have in, and then we'll show you in comparison what Then you're going to back into status quo. Yes. It's in two pages. Okay. So our status quo number is um, 6.84%. 6 so the difference between our status quo and our proposed is 293,568. So basically, um, there are things in the proposed budget that we cannot uh, take out, such as the increases for electricity, for uh, transportation, our salary increases uh, for the individual contracts. So if you take a look at the next page, and people with the handouts have the actual spreadsheet, so it is much bigger than what the PowerPoint um, shows on the screen, so hopefully it's easier for you to read. All the way over to the right, in the yellow highlighted column, you'll see the status quo number. I listed the status quo alongside the um, proposed budget there and our current approved budget. And I show you what the change is, um, what we are identifying as increases for um, status quo. So if you go down the right-hand column, you'll see all the red increases, which add up to 298,568.40. Uh, so let's hold there. Mm -hmm. In this format, does everyone understand the last two slides and what this indicates between mm -hmm. status quo and what we've put in moving forward to move the district forward? So the red is what is status quo? No. No. Okay. The, the, the red the are those. I'm going to say additional things that we're asking for above and beyond what we are required to oh, um, okay. Okay. to fund. Got it. Okay. So an example, when you look at the very first one, well, the 14580, the building substitutes, we're saying that this year we had 160,000 budgeted and we've, we've run into additional monies that we need for building substitutes, so we projected out another $14,500 with wage increases, um, with minimum wage, anything else that leads us to think that we need 14,000 more of additional monies to fund that. So you'll see that status quo change, okay? So it's any addition from this current year to next year's projection that's above the status quo. Mm -hmm. For, sorry, uh, for lines 440 and 443, rentals and lease, what, what does that comprise of? So the, um, I'll actually get to the specific changes in a couple of slides. But just in general, I mean. Yeah. So uh, 440 is usually our copier leases oh, yeah. and our technology lease. Got that. And what was the other one you said? Xerox or whatever, right? Maybe the other one. Oh, in the lease? Um, it's, it's actually not 440. It was 443 and 500. Correction. No, oh, 443 is our uh, technology lease and our uh, copier leases. Yeah, like software that we're talking about? No. Is software that, is in 695. Oh, okay. Go on the other side. Oh, I see it there. Okay, so we're talking straight like Chromebooks and things like that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, the technology lease is. What is that? Um, so every year we have four current technology leases. They each have a four year payment cycle. Right. So every year we drop off one technology lease and a new one comes on okay. for the same amount of money. And that's all done through um, the town. It's like rotating stock, is that what I'm saying? But our IT department IT uses stock. that to, to change out um, hardware and yeah. other Makes big sense. ticket items um, so that we are current and up to date with all of our technology. Okay, that's $280,000. $280,000 is the total for all four <coughs> leases. So on the next slide, you'll see um, it's a history of our requested Board of Ed uh, numbers by year and then versus our approved budget, just to give you an idea of what we've asked for and what has actually been approved and the difference between the two and the increase over the previous year. So over the past four years, we've been fortunate to have had uh, different grant funds and the monies in Fund 25 um, to supplement uh, what we needed for our general fund in order to keep things um, where they are. Uh, this year, we, we are also have the um, good fortune of having the ARP ESSER 3 funds, and that is $618,000. Uh, we are using that this year for our instructional coaches, um, a social worker and other materials, instructional materials. But at the end of this fiscal year, those funds will be expended. So as we go through additional lines, you'll see in the comments that we'll need to add those things back into the budget. Why do we get grants that are going to expire just assuming that we're going to be able to absorb it? Like Most of those are not strategic plans to keep these things running, self-fund somehow, think of other avenues. I mean, because I hear this year over year we have grants and the grants end, right? And some grants are longer term than others, right? Some I, I, I hear we have, but why is there, are there no grants to be had? Are there, but I just, I don't think we should keep applying for grants and introducing new services when we know budgets are tight if there's not a critical need. Um, because we can't keep, can't keep bringing them back and self-funding them. We don't have that, we don't have that luxury, frankly. So the grants are running out. Right, so right, moving yeah. forward, you're, what you're saying is what we're saying, the, the 25, the, the ability to have this nest egg, but then when we get grants, the school improvement grant was over a million dollars. Yeah. We bought hardware with that, but we bought a whole lot of professional development in these coaches. Once they go away, we're digging this hole. So what we need to do is get back to level funding without counting on any of this. But my point is, if you couldn't fund the new people that were coming in on grant, and you didn't have a long-term solution, and the long-term solution was to increase the budget, that's not a good solution. That's what I'm saying. I hear what you're saying to me, right. but I'm saying that when we go for a grant, if it's a new service or a new ad to the school and it's not critical, I mean, and, and there's different varies of critical, right? Like, and I don't know what that is, but I think that every grant that comes in should have to be pitched somehow because we can't keep taking on new programs knowing they're going to end and then say, hey, we need to increase our funding to support this because, hey, it's not, it's not fair to the employees if we know it's a five-year program, right? Because we don't know if we're going to be able to fund them. We just don't know. We don't know what the climate's going to look like. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Are there other grants that can, we can try to secure instead of just asking the town for that increase? But they're not going to be forever grants. Right. And so that well, we don't want to enter into something. I'm asking for innovation. Yeah. I'm asking people to think differently. I feel like we operate on a hamster wheel and we operate like it's 1972. And what I'm asking is for people to think differently. I'm asking for innovation. And I don't think we have that. And we think of our budget 
and we think, oh, go to town council, and town council, year after year, is like frustrated by us. But I think if we brought these new programs on, and then we had some creative way of sustaining them, even if it was partial, it shows good faith and effort, and I don't think we do that good enough. And I think it's an area of opportunity for us to explore. I think if you look at the funding levels that we've gotten from the town over the last several years in the increments that we've gotten and that we've been able to maintain and do what we've done, we've done an amazing job. I'm not saying you're not, I'm not even so talking I, I, about that. I'm specifically if, if, talking about grants and bringing new programs in and sustaining them and absorbing them. I'm not saying that we need to engage But what you're saying is job. don't bring on a grant if it's not going to be ongoing, if you don't have a, re, a, a solution. Mm, that's to, what I'm saying. To, and and, and I'm saying, we're saying back to you, it, it, this, this, is, this, this is the 25 account. This is what this has done because we've relied on our saving each year a $31 million budget that we're gonna get one to 2% and have three to 600,000 to carry over to do these things. We were charged and, and that's the new, the new start is now, that's gone. Right, so I think we could go to that, that fund 25 and my perception of it um, is that, and I can't speak for town council, but if I was on looking at a budget holistically as a business person and I saw one of my departments running with excess year after year and so they used they, they weren't using the money i would think their budget wasn't lean enough because they had continually had this extra money now we have a budget and we can't run at zero right we, so we, we don't know have, that and we don't have a contingency fund like the we, council does right so that's i get difference. it and i know we're not right. going to operate at zero so we should probably always have about one percent right just because we don't know about emergencies but, but year care. after year but year after year we've been bringing money back. So I think the conversation between town council and the board need to be a little bit more transparent maybe, and maybe we have a six month check-in, like this is where we're at, this is where we're gonna be extra, how do you advise us to move forward? Do you think we need to you know, increase our spending, decrease our spending if we're anticipating that we're going to have a fund 25, which I know we're not this year. But if that, if that ever were to be that we had a good year, I mean, and granted, we all know, what's inflation now, about 7% roughly? Yeah. Something like that. So, I mean, when you look at what the ask is, it's it's not above inflation. It's not. But I'm, I want us just to think differently, right? Like, I think being stagnant in our thinking with funding is dangerous. So, I'm just being the devil's advocate. Yeah. That's no, I think you're spot on. I mean, adopting new services through grants, knowing that they're going to sunset, and not having a kind of like a replacement plan behind it can be kind of kind of nerve wracking. Yeah, I, I mean, but there's reasons for some of the grants. Of the course. SIG grant, for instance, it was, was it's, giving, it's given to us because we were at an at-risk school and we were we had to do this. We had to bring people on. Right. This this was what there was certain requirements for that money, and we had to take the money and get the school out of an at risk position. Are we still? Well, then the question I the, guess becomes: Are we still in an at risk? No, we're not. Then we, we, we haven't. Right. Right. No. right. So, yeah. but you're saying it might not be fair to employees. Well, we can't. We had to put people in positions yeah, right. to help us with these. So some of them are are needed. Of course. I mean, grants are never going to be forever. Agreed. I think. But Sean, I think we're speaking the same, I think perhaps. So. But you know, well, it, it, it's the old you can't have it both ways. So okay. you have costs like special education and things that are, are going to happen, and you don't know um, at any point who's coming or who's leaving the district or what their needs are going to be. Right. That's a moving target. I think anything that's funded by grants, if it's a requirement, that's one. So that's a one area. Right, but if it's not a requirement, it's but it's a, they're, they're not a requirement. You, we we weren't required to hire people. This board adopted the four coaching in that model through that grant. It wasn't required. It was Correct. something that we thought was going to be I'm not a strong not piece to our instructional repertoire. Totally, and understand. that's why we did it. And if we move away from that and we eliminate grant funded programs, we do that. Correct. That's the, that's the I, reality. I think, I, I think what we're doing here spot. is yeah. listening to respond and not listening to understand. And so I, I would just challenge everybody to like table this and look at the recording afterwards and really think about what we're all saying to each other because it's it, it's not an all or nothing, mm -hmm. right? It's 
we're all, I think we're all understanding. It's just, I, I, I just don't think we're all listening. And so we'll table this and we'll move on or we can get stuck on this point. But um, I think that's the best action. Okay, move it along. Okay. Uh, so the next slide or page in front of you is just a summary of this year's Fund 25. We began with $399,000 and um, we have some open purchase orders. Um, we're setting aside $168,000 of that um, for our uh, retiree sick day payout that we have to do uh, per contract. And so we were able to eliminate that $168,000 uh, from the proposed budget next year by um, allocating those funds uh, from Fund 25. So with all that in mind, the current balance available right now is $35,916. Any questions on the 25 account? Nope. With the balance? The next. So, I, sorry, oh, there, there was one, but so we took out sick day payout for retirees using 125, sorry, using the 25. Fund 25. It's, it hasn't been used yet. It's um, set aside in our, you know, on paper uh -huh. that we're going to use those funds because those uh, payouts are payable June 30th. Is that a line item, the sick day payouts to be allocated money for budget next year? Yeah, and so next year you'll see that we allocated $42,000, which is the average for one certified staff member to retire. Um, at what, this, what object number is that? It is two, two, two. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it. Um, hang on. It is 229, it's called severance. We're gonna to get to that. So maybe we just go page by page, and then you'll you'll get to the point where we're gonna answer the question that you're gonna have. So now the next list is every dollar from fund 25 equating to $1.3 million. The contingency fund that the council has that we have used as fund 25. So every cent is in here for everything that we've purchased that we thought were, was of value for the children. So this shows in summary form uh, the four years from 2021 through uh, current year. If you turn the pages of your handout or advance in the slides, you'll see the um, more detailed version for each fiscal year. I have um, the account number, I have the account description, the amount expended and the detail and the total for that year, which tied back to the uh, summary page. So you'll see that for 2021, 21, 22, 22, 23, which is several pages, and 23, 24. Looking beyond that, um, we're gonna take a look at our proposed budget now uh, by object, how it's changed, and um, in detail, I provide you um, descriptions as to why the change is there. I'm not, I'm, I can read through them or you can look through them, um, but everything is listed there um, for the reason for the change. I think we should go through them line by line. Okay. Because this is the object changes and these are the things. I, I only when why there's a change. I, mean, I think we need significant percentage changes. So if you want So the ones that down. why why the change are on the right hand column. It, Those are the ones. And you know what? Like we could all read budgets. I mean, we can look at this and, and see it, but I think giving context to the change or the big changes, I mean when we have to present this to um, town council, and this inevitably is what we have to do. And every year it's the same, right? And we tell a very dry story, right? And we have the same people coming up saying that they don't want the Board of Ed funded, and we have the same people coming up and saying they think the Board of Ed is fantastic, right? But we don't do anything different. And I think we should look at this differently. 
We have some fresh faces on this board. I would love to like hear them talk and I'm not saying it right now, but like in ingest it, right? Like ingest it and I think come back and I, I would like to go to town council and be able to tell a story, a compelling story of why why we need this money, not just, well, you know, it's 7% here or 77%. I want to tell a story of children and what this money is going to do for the town's children. I want to be able to sell those people that are on fixed incomes. Yes, it might be a little bit harder for you, but we'll tell you why. We want to convince people. We don't want to just say, we want a 6% increase and our grants are ending and our you know contracts are higher. I, I want to win people over. I want them to understand our perspective. So we could go line through line and I could be a pain in the butt and challenge no, everything. And what, I don't want to do that. What we're saying I, want, is I want a compelling story. Why the change is the reason why we're asking for what's happened. If We'd love for you to present the budget, Shona. So what I'm Bruce, what do you is, think? Should I present the budget? So it generally has been more cheap. Sure. Can I bring, can I phone a friend? We, phone a few friends on the board with me? Because I think gone, I have some experts here. We've gone back and forth with who's presented the budget. Sure. So over the years, it's gone back and forth. Just and not if on you would like to present this year? Sure. Just not on great. a sports night. That would be great. <laughs> but why the change is important so you yeah. understand that right hand column going down is why are there changes with we talked about instructional coaches all the expenditures that have led up to each percentage these are these are real reasons this right is so difference. when you tell me about instructional coaches right right and they're an increase what have they done i want to know their value right and i don't mean in dollars and cents i want to know the value they bring to the school how they help the kids how they're giving better outputs what what is their value it's is their value really five thousand dollars or 77 percent or what it is no it's not it's increasing mental health is it helping special special education how many kids do they touch in a day what are their outcomes and how are they improving that's the story i want to tell because that is a far more compelling story than seven thousand dollars Okay, but the, the coaches are way more than seven thousand. Whatever, I'm just pulling. So that when, when we tell our story, we're going to have to make hard decisions about where that story is going to go, and that story could be with elimination of programs, people, all of those things. That's the reality of it, and those are those are big price things. If we have to get down to what we think we're going to get in this budget, and we can historically look back and see what we've gotten over time, and you and I know that there's gonna be a number that is gonna come in. Absolutely. So when we get to that number with what we think it is, then we're gonna to have to strategically back down, not interrupting, like you like to say, boots on the ground with the students. That's right. And what is that gonna look like? Right. And then that's the next tier of this budget building process. When that's you right. two communicate, Mm -hmm. And you get a number that we think is going to be palatable. Me too. I don't know who the two are, but well, it's the town there's council. seven. <laughs> well, the two is the town council and the board. Yeah. Right. Like when I say two, two I mean oh, two. Oh, it's not okay. Like, I was like, oh. okay. I was well, like, no, if that's how you're leaning into that. Okay. No, yeah. but you two being yeah, that, the I'm board sorry. and the council come together with what they think is an appropriate mill rate increase and what that leaves for the board that's fiscally sound for the community to absorb, that's the next part of the conversation. Well, and I then understand. we sit down and we have to back down to that. I understand, but I'm not even there yet. I'm still about developing the story so we can sell it. Well, that's I'm your, not, I'm that's not, gonna I'm not be your the, role. That's, yeah, that's gonna and I'm gonna be, gonna be calling on all of the administrators to lean into on that because I don't know the story, right? I mean, I have experience with Everybody, every school in a very limited way. I don't know the full scope of how kids are impacted at every level, and they're all so different, right? What a coach looks like in the elementary school is probably different than they look like in the middle school. And why do we need both, right? I mean, that's a question. I just, I want to be able to give a full picture. And if it's cut, it's cut, and we make, we make hard decisions. But at least give it a different approach in the good old college. Try this way. And well, I, I can't right? wait to see your story. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's not keep, my story. It's our right, story. Right. The two. All right. Let's keep moving. So while, while we're going over these objects, if you could just highlight what's a, what's under our contract and what isn't. And obviously, some are you know in terms of the uh, specifically personnel. Uh, 
like, uh, not, not personnel specific, like transportation or something to that effect. So transportation is a five-year contract. So we're, we are into that contract, and what we tried to do is give a little bit back if we had it at the end, yeah. going forward towards the next year, and they would give us a break in services. Understood. So the bus one is definitely the lease and contract. Is, is you know one yeah. uh, the transportation is probably the biggest one. The biggest now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Martha, jump in. I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's that's right. All right, uh, jumping ahead. So are we going past all the object changes? Is that what you want to do? Well, so some of us who are new wouldn't mind hearing some of the important things that you think should come to our attention. Mm -hmm. To just skip through them and to read at home later and not no. know what I'm reading yeah. would be very helpful. Absolutely. So go through the big yeah. highlighted ones, right? The big changes. That's what I, yeah, so, I need every single one, but the ones that you feel like, you mm -hmm. know, would be the most important for me to understand moving forward. Okay. On sure. the first page, um, there's overtime, uh, in addition to, of course, the uh, salaries. <clears throat> there is um, overtime, and we're increasing that overtime line to uh, represent what has actually been um, the actual costs. Our uh, health insurance, which is medical, uh, vision, and dental, is anticipated to go up another 8% this year. Usually we get the renewal um, in April or May. So fingers crossed it comes in at eight or less. Um, if it comes in more, then I'll have to um, make that adjustment. Is the traditional increase about that much year over year, or are we kind of like at a peak? Uh, no, we are part of the uh, Connecticut Partnership Plan. Uh -huh. So the renewals are based on actual costs. Um, and what our uh, you know experience is. I mean, percentage of increase, I should say. They increased like eight percent. Yeah. Like we saw eight or less or so last year too. I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. So JD, I'd like to bring your eye to the attention of Object One Eleven Certified Salaries. It's at a seven point three seven percent. But if you look at the change, it's over a one million dollar change. So although the percentage doesn't look high in comparison to some others, the dollar amount does. Mm -hmm. I, I want to call your attention to the why the change column, right? If you look at it, it's it's a mix of things, right? So you see instructional coaches, social workers, and granting expires. The actual contractual piece of this is 681,000 change, which is a 4.47 increase not a 7.37 increase. So that's something to note because we're pulling out contractual because there's nothing we can do about right. that, but the remainder look like they may be funded by grants, so that's an area we're gonna need to keep in mind because that's gonna be pulled out. Just that was worth a mm -hmm. call out. Mm -hmm. Martha, may I ask about 229 severance? Yes, of course. I see that we've got in here for just one potential retiree. Yes. Do we have a sense of how many retired? I mean, I know the I know the seniority list, and people are moving, you know, to the to that end. That was the fund okay. twenty five amount that we left in. Okay, so, so that we're will saying take care of this, and then there's yes. one in here. Yes, yes. For, so for that co that covers the ones that we know of, and the potential if we get one more. So we know of four. We have to pay four. Right. That's the so one. that hundred sixty eight thousand is gone because we have to pay that. So you're right. only budgeting for one more next year I think the question is yes because yeah. I don't know of any so right somebody now. has already said no I don't okay so you're just right. guessing but if, one but if someone okay. um, gotcha does give us notice between July and December right then I have to pay that out yep so you budget for one. June. yep so yep makes sense any questions on that first page if we flip okay. what's the difference between ground maintenance and property maintenance where are you looking? So 420 is ground maintenance, and then in fund 25, I saw property maintenance. Oh, so property service? Yeah. So property services are things where we have vendors come in, uh -huh. uh, like for elevator maintenance, okay. um, HVAC work, okay. Sanitrol, okay. Um, Johnson Controls, things like that. And then ground maintenance is the actual uh, cutting or uh, you know, actual maintenance of the grounds. Got it. Okay. Um, cutting the lawn, if you know, if that had to be, or trimming a tree, or something like that. Which one? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Paint. Paint. Yes. For the fields, which is astronomical. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Does everyone know John Florio? Yep. 
Uh, do I have to introduce him? <laughs> okay. Thanks, John. Uh, you'll see a big decrease in um, 320 professional services. Um, all of our uh, special education services are based on actual student need, um, and our actual student need um, estimate for next year has decreased. Okay. So you'll see that uh, shown in the budget there. You'll also see an increase of $30,000 in 270 workman's compensation. Our actual expenditure for this current year is 339,000. So I am raising the proposed budget for next year to come more into line with what our actual cost is. And then there's a 2.4% uh, increase on top of that for um, a rate increase. Hopefully there is none, but I don't know that. So I use 2.4 as a uh, as an estimate. Uh, on 340, I'm sorry, I think we're on the next page, but 340, other professional services. Mm -hmm. uh, Harvard Project Zero. That doesn't comprise of the four percent, does it? I mean, like that's not the total sum. Is that correct? No, that's okay. that. There's um. Like the two. That's the reason for the increase. That's, that's the, the new four percent. That's right? the that's new new addition. Not yes. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. Um. Line 350, technical services. You'll see an increase there of 33,000 to 19. Um, when we brought you the budget drivers a few weeks ago, we had $25,000 allocated for each building. Um, when we checked around, 25,000 was the estimated that a lot of other districts were using. Truth of the matter is, we really don't know how much it's gonna be because it's never been done before. So we decided in an effort to reduce our proposed budget to allow for $10,000 for four buildings. The new high school will not be um, needed, need to have that done because it's technically still under construction. Mm -hmm. However, the fourth building there is the auditorium um, because that will need to be done. So there's $10,000 set aside for Four buildings at forty thousand dollars. The reason the increase doesn't reflect forty is because some of our other lines we were able to reduce. But I think it'd be also good to highlight some of the things that change that we're saving money on. Because when you're, we're looking through the lines, there's quite a few things in parentheses as well. So I think when we're talking about well, lines are are increasing, there are also things that are decreasing and understanding why that's happening. Is it because it was a one-time purchase and we won't see that purchase again until you know five years from now? Is it, um, you know, like, I wouldn't know why all of it, and I'm not sure anyone else would, but like, I don't know, some books do you buy every two years? I, I don't know what that looks like, but there are several lines that there's savings, and I bet if we add them up, it's fairly significant. And I'll add them up later, but there's a lot of those lines. <laughs> Let's see, on the next page, uh, beginning with water, 409, um, if you look down to 440 rentals, you'll see a decrease there of 17,000. We anticipate that our ice hockey team at the high school next year will actually be a co-op. So we were able to reduce the uh, estimated expenditure for the rental of the rink um, by 50% because that will be shared by the co-op town. So you'll see that savings there. Uh, you'll also see an increase in the um, transportation line, 510. That 4.66 is representative of the uh, contract increase with DATCO. And you'll see again, um, the late bus uh, line is increased by the same amount. The 513 ESA Magnet School Transportation Line actually shows a reduction. Um, we were able to save uh, $50,000 there because that we currently we have $50,000 budgeted for uh, special ed transportation for uh, Magnet School and ECA, and that is not being used, so that was cut. Uh, VOAC Transportation for regular ed students right underneath that, you'll see the same 4.68%. And then underneath that, outsourced transportation. This is for vendors other than DATCO that we use to transport our outplaced students. Um, 
And based on current prices and actual student placements for next year, you'll see a very large increase there of $213,534. So that is a big increase. We're anticipating all of our property and liability insurances will uh, increase by about two and a half percent. Telephone. Um, we have a new TPX phone system at the high school and the price for that phone system has increased our actual costs. Um, currently this year for the high school, we're anticipating that we're gonna have about $22,000 in telephone expenses alone. So that increase um, there is based on actual monthly uh, expenditures that is needed. Postage, um, 535, we reduced that uh, for the current year, 23-24, um, and we'll have to raise it back up again uh, for next year. Just curious, what do we still mail? There's a lot of things that go out certified mail. Um, we had some things from the business office that if we get uh, things from state marshal or other things that have to be, um, make sure they get to the employee. Digital isn't an option with digital signatures? Well, we have tried to hand some of those things out to the employee in, employees individually. Um, but either they don't come to the central office or the if it, uh, some of our employees do not have email or do not like email. Mm -hmm. And so we mail things home. Yep. And then I'm not sure as far as um, the buildings, what's mailed out for students, I'm, I don't know. I mean, some things I bet can't be, but I was just curious if any digital evaluation was done, like efficiency work on postage. Or packets. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was just curious. We mail your board pack. That's what the expense is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a a fortune. Kill us. Those, those board packets? Read the things, will you? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, printing and binding is increased because for the current year, we were able to uh, decrease that, so we need to raise it back up again. Uh, 560 tuition, these are special education uh, tuition costs based on actual student need and outplacement, and we anticipate that those costs are going to go up because of current placement, so that's $141,618 or a 75% increase. What's the difference between 560 and 563? So 560 are uh, schools that the state identifies as public. Okay. And 563 are the non-public okay. special Okay. Oh, got it, okay. I should have read closer. And, or, uh, sorry, now we're talking about tuition. I, I see the transportation for VOAG and uh, Magnet. 515, 513, 514, but I don't see the tuition cost or tuition lines. What numbers are you on? So, VOAG transportation. Uh, so, and those would be. Magnet transportation. The VOAG uh, and Magnet School are considered public, so those increases would be in the 560 line. 560, top 60, okay. Also, in 560 is the tuition that we pay to uh, Brantford for our adult education. And then special education, um, public outplacements. So hold on, confused for a second. Did we use Fund 25 for tuition for Magnet last year? No. And we didn't. Or what about VOAG then? Well, hold on. So this guy says it was on there, but I think it's tucked in so that it's 560 and it's combined with the Fund 25. No, yeah, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Those. So I'm not trying to Currently, this. not not last year. Currently, we have um, VOAG tuitions coming out of the Open Choice okay. grant money, yeah. and we're moving those back into the general fund for the 24-25. And is there a break? Can you break that down? Maybe I'll ask it another time for us just to break down those two numbers out of the 560 then. 
as to show. The 563 is one line only, and the 560 is actually three lines. So it's um, it's your tuition well. and for ECA and magnet for us. Special, I'm sorry, yeah, special education and regular education and adult education. The adult ed in Brantford is over $100,000. It's 100 and what? 30? 130? Approximately. So it's significant, and that's something we have to pay into. Right. And it increases by about 3% every year on average. What is that? The adult ed. It's anything that Brantford runs here for. Um, English as a second language, any programs that were run through our school system for adult ed, people come in and take different courses, mm -hmm. and all of that is uh, collapsed into that one payout a month. Uh, and there's four neighboring towns that pool their money. It's Clinton, us, Madison, and I believe Guilford uh, that pay into that same brand for the co op. Yeah, sort of. Right. Smart strategy. It's, it's a real expense, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a real expense, and that's why it's where it's at. And everyone uh, understands with special ed costs, a family moves into the district with student with any needs that it's it's the district's responsibility to. I don't think anyone on this board or on town council would deny special ed child. No, no, education. no. I'm not saying that, yeah. but I'm saying understanding for the board members that. that it's, a, it's an obligated cost, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so it's not, there's not any, you could cut this, you could, no. No, you can't. You can't, just so they understand. Mm -hmm. Under 611 instructional, um, you'll see that last year, uh, in May 2023, we were able to take $143,000 of that year's budget, so out of the 22-23 budget, because we had um, saved it within the year. And we were able to use that money to uh, pre-purchase uh, instructional supplies and software for the current year. So you'll see that for this year, the 23-24 um, budget, the requested or approved amount is $160,000. And for the 24-25 proposed budget, we are um, requesting 218, and basically the rep the increase represents the additional funds that we need to ensure we have all the materials we need for our students for next year. Uh, there's an $11,600 increase for custodial maintenance supplies. Um, as you know from your uh, budgets at home, price of everything is going up, so we've allowed for uh, increases for all of our supplies we use in the district for cleaning. Um, oil, 620, you'll see an increase of 90% uh, or $82,000. We were able to, in June of last year, 2023, we were able to lock in our current rate. Um, that lock required a 50% uh, percent deposit, so we sent um, that 75690 in to the vendor. And now we need to backfill that line to um, get the funds we'll need to heat our buildings next year. But the high school, I know it's phase one, or phase two is incomplete, but mostly, most is phase one. Do you see like a, is there a dip or any increase? Uh, Actually, the only two buildings that use oil are this building here and Totake. Okay, uh, sorry, but do you, are you seeing a decrease, or I don't know if you can answer this right now without tweezing it down, but like decrease in kind of like uh, efficiency in, in terms of you know, heating, cooling? Like at the high school? At the high school. John, if John, you want to speak to I don't, I don't know if you can do that just yet, but with phase two technically out, but are you seeing the uh, school status right quo? Or? It's, hard, it's hard to do right now. Yeah. Kind of after the the year and then the following year. Right. Um, it's hard to do right now when we started. Exactly. We're just the I so hypothetical question. You have to answer. We are tracking it with the engineering firm um, who designed the building. Yeah. They also want to know. So we are working with the two a and on tracking. Cool. The energy, so, but we'll take, we'll take another rotation probably. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Thank you. 
on the next page. Yeah, um, next page, 622 electricity. Again, there's another very large increase of $87,000 for 16%. Um, Quick question there. with the solar? That's what I was That's doing. That's a million question, so <laughs> let me jump in on that. Yeah. So I spoke to our- Did they all? I had it written here. We, I, I, I spoke, was supposed to say this, but- <laughs> I spoke to the state rep yesterday about the frustrations with that solar fear and what's been happening with what we thought was going to be decreased electricity down at you know, our campus for the middle school, mm -hmm. high school, and yeah. auditorium. That has not happened. We have not seen any of the fruits or fruition from that solar field. So we've been in contact with Anthony Esposito, yes. with the town. Um, it seems to be illuminating. Are we sold a big old line? Well, we just want to know where you our, know what? where our credit is going because our electrical costs are not decreasing. Right. So the town, the, the state rep now is going to be involved with that because um, we're, we're not seeing it. No, our, our expenses. and neither, neither is the town. Neither is the town. Oh, yeah. well, so that's good. We're all awesome. so. <laughs> <laughs> Misery loves company. Well, well, most of the credit is going to go to the school. Right, right. I remember that. Gonna, the town buildings that are on that program are going to get the leftovers. Are, yeah, right. there won't be any leftovers. Yeah, apparently. So it'll be the high school, the middle school, the auditorium, Jerome right. Garrison. Those four buildings are probably going to eat up any of those savings. Right. And if there are any leftover, then it starts to go. Right. So we're I just remember waiting that, for the first meal. I remember that discussion. There's no leftovers right yet because we haven't gotten our, our main course. So we're waiting on the main course. Was there a, a target date that we, we were supposed to see it? We've been going back and forth um, with the town offices um, and the business office here with the United Illuminating and Alta Solar uh, for probably eight or nine months, and we haven't been able to make any hey. headway. It's not a strong current right now between the provider, the recipients of the fruits of what we're supposed to be seeing over extended periods of time. So everybody's on it. Okay. I'm, I think it's going to be going down. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, probably the Is it one of those engineering yeah, things right. we talked about? Like <laughs> I'm not going to comment. All right. Okay. I get it. It's addressed. All right. Okay. All right. That threw me off. Where are we at now? Uh, uh, textbook 641. Uh, dollar wise, it's not a big, big increase, but the percentage um, is 594%. But you'll see over to the right hand side all the different um, books that we are requesting for next year. Given it's a school, I'm going to just say textbooks are probably not something that we're going to really like. Biology is important. Yep. What, I ask that question the biology piece. <laughs> I do. I was a biology major, so what do I know? But those books went on a date like every 50, you know, every, school, every semester. In bio books. Right, but they still went on a, out of date every five, every semester. I had to buy the one that I was trying to sell, you know, 20 years ago. The next semester was worth less, right? And no money, unless the course was being taught again. I don't know, it's just something to consider. But we buy the software with it too, don't we? If there's software, that's one thing, you know. We buy book and software, so the book can go for probably 200 bucks. Right. And the software package is probably 100. Half of that or less. Yeah. 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 I mean, when so, you have yeah, a great Gatsby, they still read those. Very good. Yeah, they're good. It's not cheap. Of course, so I just didn't know they still read them. Again, um, the library books directly underneath 642. The dollar amount is 9,200. Um, the percentage change is large, almost 615%. The current year budget uh, reflects a reduction that we did um, the beginning of the year to make uh, this budget balance. Is so, this to buy new books, ref refurbish books, replace lost books? No, or this is to purchase new. This is to purchase. Uh, new? Okay. purchase. Um, so we're asking for money to um, reestablish the lines at what they were. Uh, it's two hundred dollars at Jerome and thirty five hundred dollars at the uh, other buildings. Because we cut it peanuts compared to the grand scheme. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, workbooks again. The increase is large, but not the dollar amount. Um, these are workbooks needed to implement um, a standards aligned with the math curriculum and uh, specifically illustrative math at intermediate and the high school. And there is also workbooks there for AP Calculus. Uh, 
Next page. Software, there's the other large increase. Um, as I mentioned before, last May we were able to purchase uh, supplies and software. This is the other piece of that. Um, so we're going to need funds here in order to purchase all of the software, software that the um, students will use for the 24-25 school year. That sums up the I noticed a huge change. decrease, and of course I'm going to notice this, right? But, uh, in equipment, athletic equipment, is that because we all bought all new, or why is there a $58,000 reduction? Um, so there was just the request for the 2500 in athletic equipment at the for both schools. Um, I believe there was a lot of equipment purchased this year. There might have been. I mean, yeah. you don't need it every year. Account, just... we, we did goals. We did okay. a, so lot it's, of, it's a lot of big, off here. A lot of big purchases okay. we purchased. All right. That brings us to the uh, summary by function. Function here are um, the large groups. You'll see salaries broken out. Benefits are broken out um, with the percentage change for each of those. Tuition, buildings and grounds, curriculum, support programs, which are the supplies and services related to all of the services that our um, students get. So social work, guidance, nursing, psychology, those are all the support programs. Technology, of course, consists of professional and purchase services related to IT, the technology lease, cyber liability insurance, the internet, supplies, and software. Administrative are professional services such as legal, medical, property and liability insurance, um, and expenditures related to the business aspect of the district. And then transportation, of course, is the district transportation for all of our students and the um, activities. The next page is a graph of the increase by those functions we just went over. So you'll see salary is the largest change there, followed by tuition, um, followed by transportation. The next slide shows uh, the current employee count by group and the projected um, count also by the same group. So we have 332 and a half <laughs> employees. Um, the half is there because we count our teachers by FTE, so that's where the half comes from. Um, and we are projecting the same number for next year as well. Any idea what the student-teacher ratio is out there? It's different in every building. Is it? Okay. Yeah. The next slide shows salary increases by affiliation. Um, if you remember, we did. We just finished um, negotiations on the majority of our contracts. The only contract we have coming up for negotiation in the spring are the paraprofessionals. Um, other than that, you'll see uh, certified salaries, which consists of our teaching staff, is up by 7.96%. Um, but again, the majority of that is because of the increase we needed to add back the instructional coaches and the social worker. Uh, paraprofessional is flat because the contract is ending, so we don't know what the uh, percentage change will be. Secretarial, nurse, unaffiliated, um, they they will buy Mark, contracts. We know it's not going to be flat, right? Do we need to worry about that today? Mine too, right? Okay. I know it's not going to be flat, um, but do we have on that? chart, it's represented as flat. But it's not in the actual budget, or that, when will that take effect? When would that contract take effect? Would it be? The contract would take following? effect July 1st, 1st of 2024. Okay. Wait. The budget we're working on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there, there are some um, estimations included in the line that says unaffiliated and contract negotiations. 
So we have the forecast. Are we going to be? Is the forecast going to cover it? You can automatically guesstimate. Mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I know we have to tread yeah. lightly, but I just want right. to make sure. Yes, we've forecast and projected enough in this budget to cover that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, and so, so you'll see going down the line um, the increases for each uh, group, and together, all of the salaries comes out to a six point six four percent increase. Over the salaries currently. I have one more question. I'm sorry, and I'm That's jumping okay. all over the place because my mind works that way, and I apologize. Um, all of the reoccurring costs, not the one time costs that were in Fund 25 <clears throat> that we, we used that for this year, um, are they now reflected in our regular budget, for lack of a better word? Like referees? Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. now yes. in the yes. Okay, all right. So we didn't leave anything out that we knew we would have to have okay. for next year. Okay. Uh, the next page is uh, a graph of those uh, functions, um, the pie chart, as we like to call it. Uh, salary, again, is the biggest piece of the pie, followed by benefits and transportation. Just another way of looking at it for um, visual purposes. And the next slide is um, proposed budget by location. So these locations do include salaries associated, associated with those buildings. Um, so you'll see um, Jerome, Totucket are pretty much the same at about between, you say 11% roughly. The intermediate school is 14.6%. The high school has a bigger piece at almost 22%, and then district-wide, those are the services that reach beyond um, one building, so they encompass the entire district. Things like transportation benefits, liability insurance, uh, special education, of course, that's the biggest piece. And two very small slivers there are the auditorium and the auger house. Okay, quick question. There's been a lot of talk about the expenses of this building and splitting it with park and rec. Has that been ironed out? And if so, is that reflected in here or not yet? So for our electrical and oil claim all that we've been working on cutting everything in half, is, have they participated in this year's expenses or is that towards next year. I'll have to check on that okay. and get back to you. Okay. But I know that they've been working with um, Park and Rec. Okay. Well, I can get... tell you, I was just at Park and Rec meeting when they did their budget yeah. two weeks ago, and they have not received anything support yet for this year. The bill, are... billing, you mean? Yes. Like, with any backups, any, with a breakdown or anything like that, so. That's interesting because the direct, I know the director was talking with Lori here about the electrical cost, and she was building her budget. So I could. Yeah, I mean, it's built into their budget right. and everything, but they haven't seen anything come in from your month, monthly bills. I would imagine if you get a monthly bill for electrical, it's pretty easy to do 50% and not wait until the end. That's not new math. I'm waiting on that power grid to start shooting electricity this way. So yes, that's the plan for oil and okay. electricity. Here. Well, it sounds like we need to get them. Split. We'll find out. From up to date. To that. Up to date. Uh, the next slide is our looking ahead slide. So what I did was I took those same um, functions, function groups that we've been looking at and projected them forward for 25-26 as well as 26-27. The factors for the increase I use are listed there along the right-hand side, um, and the salary um, increases I use per contract. Is everyone on 29? Does that make sense to you to your projection now? There's no grants in there. There's nothing coming off of grants. There's nothing coming off of anything with Fund 25. This is real for current staff or what we have moving forward, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that 
Is everyone comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next slide we're going to move into our capital fund request. Um, you're going to see uh, numbers next to the request. They're, the projects are not in any kind of priority order. They're just listed uh, simply for um, reference and uh, in order to separate out each project. So they're just listed randomly. Um, they're not in a priority order. So there are funds here requested for uh, track replacement at the high school for a new athletic storage building at the high school, a um, HVA system at the auditorium, a HVAC system for the Jerome Harrison gym, uh, paving, uh, the cost yet has to be determined between um, the Board of Ed and the Public Works Director, um, so paving needs to be done for uh, Jerome and Tawtucket. So we're not asking for that because we already asked for it. So we must have money for that. So John, do you want to talk about paving? Paving, um, last two budgets we proposed paving from Harrison and Tawtucket Valley. Um, I believe that there is money, money's allocated towards paving. Um, we just don't know if but the new bids this year for paving are going to be at. I am working with Fran Roll and the contractors to try to find out what the increased cost will be for paving and what the town council has budgeted for the, for the paving. Because we requested before they put money in. You have $90,000. That, that, that was allocated to you. Okay, so $90,000 allocated. Fran thinks is probably going to run somewhere around. So, do we have quotes from two years ago, last year? No, quotes, but all those quotes have to be updated. No, I know, but I'm but saying, it, it, did we not get it done then because it, they were too high and we couldn't pay for it, or? Not, not that they were too high. That was the going rate with paving then. I mean, I, I don't. But why didn't we get it done? I guess is my question. If it was allocated why didn't we get to, it done? yeah. That's up, that was up to the top council. But they gave us the money. They, but they don't. They give us enough. They didn't give us enough money to do what we needed to do. We gave you what you requested. You, 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 the request was for ninety thousand, and that request what we gave. The request was over ninety thousand. It was one hundred something thousand. So I that's what the bid came in. I have to put what I So my suggestion would be because. Um, this is now our third year of requesting money and not spending it. And I know that's a hot seat and that's something I'm sitting in every year. I, I, the unit ventilators and the paving. Every year, it's like Groundhog Day. So I don't... The unit ventilators... Are they, they're in, right? No, you're not right. The unit ventilators, we cannot rip the old ones out until we have the power for the new ones. We ordered the transformers the transformers came in two weeks before the start of school. There's no way we can change all the unit ventilators yeah. in two weeks. John, when so did we first get those unit home. ventilators? They, 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 that's, that's how it works. We, no, we no, I know, but we, we don't supply them. We don't make the equipment. So we when did we work. get those unit ventilators awarded? What's that? When did we purchase those unit ventilators? They were actually purchased out of Fund 25. If you look through your detail, you can see them. Um, the vendors were purchased two different times. After purchase, mm -hmm. okay. and then another after purchase. After installed, after sitting in the storage trailer, because we didn't have the power for them, we could transform them. So what year were they? I'm just, I, I know it's going to be a question, John. Just we're both going to be questions. They'll be, so. installed, they'll be completed this year. And is it 21, 20 summer? 21, 22? We purchased for the 25. Mm -hmm. How much did we purchase for the 20? And they'll be done this summer, all of them? But wait a minute, let's, let's for, for clarification. There, um, so in this number is an oil burner the and the unit ventilators and playground mulch, uh, $166,707. Out of Fund 25. Out of Fund 25. Okay. All right, so so we, we did spend our money. So we those. don't need anything right from the unit ventilators now. We need, just need, need installation. I need the electrical. We have, we put seventy-five thousand dollars for connection costs. The ventilators are here. The transformers are here. 
Combo for the electrical is already wrong. Now we'll just have installation. That's like your team doing the installation, or is that? John does it, right? Yeah. You're doing the installation, right? I do the tear out the old ones, uh -huh. install the new ones, and I do the hydraulic heating end. Okay. We bring an HVAC company in to do the air conditioning end, and the electrician to tie the electrical end. Okay, so do we need any more money for unit ventilators, or it's just a matter of getting them in at this point? Okay. All so, right, so. Perfect. So when okay. that comes up, we know but, they're going into the summer, but there's no additional funds needed. Right. So let's, on the record. And the mayor's sitting here hearing it. On the record. <laughs> I need zero dollars for these unit ventilators. Okay. I have everything I need. They're sitting and waiting with the electrical hookup. Then that building will be done. It will be done. Okay. So we have a timeline for it, too. The second part, on the paving. Yeah. Wasn't that bid to a local contractor? And then it, it had to go to the state bid, or something happened. I remember, I remember that. I remember that too. So, so we talked about the this. Right. Bid, it came in with a lot of paper from right. a local contractor. Right. Okay. The Tom Hawkins post, we had to go and look at the state, the state bid list. Yes. The state bid contractors were higher than my zone. Right. They, we couldn't award it to my zone. They wanted to go to state, but they were higher. Was it going to pay more money because it was going on a state bid? My zone paid the high school. There's nothing wrong with local paving. This bid was cheaper. That was the problem. The last bid that went out last fall, Maizano was still higher than what it, the, than the ninety thousand that the but figure that you gave us. The, the bid was always higher than ninety thousand. I have all the paperwork through that. But it was never cheaper. It was never the lowest ninety thousand. It was always over a hundred thousand. Always over a hundred thousand. Okay, so how do we move forward? So, John, do you think not, about the strategy to best move forward, right? Because we, we could still not need to pay Jerome Harrison for 90 dollars. Right, I hear There's you. No way. We, we could have done patchwork at Tawtucket Valley for 90 dollars. Okay, so my, my question is I, I hear what you're saying to me. We do need more money if we want this done, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is our best strategy to get this across the finish line? Our best strategy line? now get the lowest bid right now, take the 90 we have, and see what the difference is and pay the two schools. Okay, so I, sh I, I would think our best approach would be to get those three bids yeah. prior to our We're budget working. so we could walk in with them. Right? That. And is that, do you need them within 30 days of that meeting or is there any time frame that we should be sensitive of? As far as what's up? Do, do, is there like a time frame? Do they need to be like within 30 days of our meeting? Is there any like, like how long are bids good for, I guess? It won't take long. We won't take long to get the estimates because we already have the square footage in there on okay. paper and design. Okay. You can give it to any contract with the paper square footage. Okay. John, when you do a paving project, yes. do you always communicate with, I'm not going to say anybody's name, Fran Marola, Director of Public Works? Do you hold this, do you guys hold each other's hands going yes. through this process? We work together on everything. So there's never any surprises on any of this? Okay. No. So the two of us, meaning not you and Fran, but the two of us, are always aware of what's going on. On anything having to do with exteriors and buildings, grounds, land, the fields, grass, pavement, land, anything, Fran and I work together on everything. I hear you. So let's, to get this paving across the finish line, let's get those three bids. We can answer the unit ventilators. What was else was on that list? Well, no, here's. Well, so, he's talking quotes. Quote. That's right, quotes. Quote. Sorry, quotes. You're right, quotes. But, but, but then it would have to go out to bid anyway. For right? the unit ventilators, yeah. I have them. Yeah. I have power. Transformers are in the They're sitting in the top of the valley. I have electricity. You, we will. Yeah. You're taking them out, you're putting them in, yeah. we don't need anything else. All right, there's no cost in just the electrical and the okay. electrician okay. and the HVAC company, which we got quotes already, everybody got all along, that was the connection cost. Okay. That was the connection cost. Okay, so we don't need money, we have a plan to 
get quotes, right, and then bring that to town council and they could decide if they want us to move forward and move on that bid. And I would suggest if we are awarded that capital money, we sit, put that out to bid like within 24 hours. Why are we getting quotes and then bids? Because we need to go to town council with the cost so we can ask them for the increase. But I think policy-wise, we need to get, we need to bid it out because it's over a certain amount, but we need to give quotes to show town council how much it will be, like why we're asking for that song. Okay. You, you might be already thinking about this, John, and let me refrain, but like, you know, the north northern parking lot of the new high school, you can time it up, right? All three places, the same contract or better price. I don't well, know. I don't want to promote the other company that did the high school. I think that. it's been said five times. I, I just like that. They were good enough to do the high school through the bidding process right. and get the contract and be awarded it. And they are local, which I know someone said out loud. You just so, throwing it out there, right? Yes. Thing we have to. Yes. I think there's lots of ways to get on when it goes up to bid. The local contractor bids on it. You don't have to go with state contract. Right. You, can, you can go. Yeah. Right. Have to, yeah. They don't have to be on the, the state okay. contract list because you went out to bid. Correct. You know, but you can't bid. just take a quote from somebody that's not on the state bid list without sending it out to bid. Correct. You have, if, yeah. if they actually bid on yep. the bid and they're not on the state contract, Understood. you can award it to right. that right. person. Right. That doesn't prevent them right. from getting okay. the award. All right, so I think we've got the paving good. I think we've got the unit ventilator set. Martha, what else is on that list? I don't want to talk about it. needs a oh. walk-in freezer and a walk-in cooler. Okay. Four. I'm assuming they're not working. Uh, they're in Speak dire need the two of replacement. Walk-in freezer and walk-in coolers. I told you about our original cooler. The rotting out. Each wow. year, we get cited from more health. It's a total line of more health. The insulation is deteriorating. It's causing moisture problems and actually water on the floor in the kitchen or hallway causing, causing slipping issues with the staff. It's causing mold on the side of the freezers and up above, which has to be cleaned, maintained, and still does have to be changed Got it. continuously. The floor is deteriorating the inside and patched in four or five different Okay. Areas. So we're going to get shut down by the board of health if we don't replace those walk in freezers and cool. Okay. Rose, is there any money left to the ARPA money? There is. How much is in the ARPA left? Um, we have approximately $350, 360 1000 yes. 360000 So I will. Well, maybe. Well, we are looking to finalize our ARPA spending within. If not, then we worry about So can we? And, and, you know, the one request from the board bed that came forward for the ARPA, we heard nothing else after that one request, and, and it was, you know, it's not going to happen. It was a discussion that we had, and, you know, the, the one request from the board bed was for an advanced manufacturing building uh, at the high school. That was the only request that came from the board of ed mm -hmm. on there. And our discussion included we needed more information as far as how this was going to work, curriculum, what we were projected, and blah, blah, blah. And you know, we never got anything out of that. So we just continued on. So, Rose, oh, but, given the health, situ like the health situation of the freezers, is that an appropriate ARPA request, or is that still more appropriate for capital? It just when I hear health and all, it just kind of and... makes me a little squirmish. What, what, uh, I can check. What did we get in capital last year from the town? In capital. I don't, I don't what did we get in capital? I don't believe we received anything. Yeah, we didn't ask. Capital projects. Money. So, Okay, so I got nothing in, in ARPA and nothing in capital. So I'm hoping that that being said, that this year that will be brought into consideration when we talk about some of those things that we absolutely have to have. But what, I think that's a fair request. Well, that is, but that didn't come forward. Yeah. In the ARPA no, no like I'm saying the capital. If we would pull out last year's capital and look at it, and if we got zero, I would think that the Board of Ed would be in a position this year where some of these things, we get their attention that we didn't get anything last year. We didn't get any of the ARPA money. 
Um, we should be the high priority this year. That's all I'm saying. Can we connect if this is a, if you think it's appropriate for the freezer? Um, because if if you think it is appropriate, I'll make a request and right. get it to the. I just I don't. Just, he's eating food in a rotting freezer. It's a cooler in a freezer. So yeah. you know what? We don't, don't want to miss the ARPA. The we don't want to miss the ARPA. Nine. Nine. Seven, I want this in the story. So 80, 80, and I'm only asking for well other things, but eight. A value story is important. I'm going to spend on books. So may I ask just for my own yeah. understanding? I mean, these are the projects that we will be asking for money for this year. Yes. Or is there money allocated? The payment money is still available to us, or no? There's 90. They're going to get new quotes, and they're going to look to offset that to do the, the payment. Nothing else in here has any money allocated. No. Everything else here is, is new requests that we're looking to do. Okay. They're not prioritized, but I think it's safe to say they keeping, are. Cool, not. keeping food cold is and important. frozen is important. Yes. Um, and the the two HVAC request replacements, Joe Harris and Jim and the auditorium, uh -huh. uh, those are original equipment. They're operating currently at less than 50%. Uh, those, those are not wants, those are needs. So you're not going to be able to cool your own car in this year, and you're not going to be able to cool your own car in this year. Okay. Well, we can leave that in the capital request, but if, uh, yes. but if we have a chance remember, to maybe... Remember, this year we do our HVAC assessment. Mm -hmm. okay? After we do the HVAC assessment, next year, the HVAC regulations kick in. Okay. These are going to be up in the assessment. Speaking of the grants the state put out, a grant for this type of work. Mm -hmm. We've been working on that grant. Okay. And so what I'm hearing is if you do not want us to submit for reimbursement on these grants for this equipment, we need to stop. And you've already started a lot of this late. Well, it's, it's, but it's... But it's a one-time thing. It's not an it's, ongoing thing. It's it's one-time payout for replacement. The town would have to absorb a percentage of the overall contract, uh -huh. but you'd be getting it for short dollars on the magnitude of. Look at these things. The HVAC system is one hundred fifty thousand. Right. Jerome is one hundred forty thousand. That's three hundred thousand okay. dollars. Well, okay. Now we're submitting so, money for. First of all, I just want to explain something to Judy because it's your first budget season. So everything that we've talked about except for capital, okay, we ask for a dollar amount from the town council and they give us what they're gonna give us, okay? And then we figure it out from there. They don't have the authority to say, well, you have to get rid of this and you have to get rid of that. The capital items is separate. It's outside of that money that we're asking for. They can pick and choose. They could say, yes, we'll give you the money for this one and this one. That's what you're getting. Okay. So they can pick those. Okay. So they basically have line item veto, whatever you want to say on those. So I'm, I'm hearing that... I, I think that we should put a request in for the cooler and the freezer with the ARPA money. What does yeah. everybody no, else no, think? No, that's a given. Okay. We're going to put in for other things for ARPA, and then what we don't get, we're going to put in for capital. Because the timing rose, you're looking to spend that ARPA money by when? Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So we so need to get this to you as soon as possible so that you could represent the board in what we're looking of. Is there a time frame and a format, it, format that it needs to get to you by? I, I missed the whole part of that. Um, well, our February meeting is February 20th. So okay. So you would like to get it on the agenda. Um, you just need to get it to me. Okay. The week before, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. The week before. Okay. Is there any format like to make a special request for this? Just, um, to, just an email? Well, it would be helpful if there's someone at the meeting yeah. that when we discuss ARPA, you can give your pitch as to. John, are you available on February 20th? He is. What it's for. <laughs> he is available. Um, just okay. check. So I just have a question on the grants for the HVAC system. Sometimes the grant, you know, there, there's a matching person for right. each town. 
Yeah. So what, you know, what that is, that is, we don't know that yet. Believe it or not, was, we don't like him, it's not what it's the good. state has the jumping in the this grant. But they want to call the grant. You have to have, you have to hire an engineer first. They want to set the grant without the engineer's design. So that's number one. So, I try to work, I'm working to deal with our engineers. We have to have an engineer do our HVAC assessment. We're going to get two jobs out of one. We're going to have to do each work on the grant and the HVAC assessment. We're going to get it in on the power of the We're going to see it. But there's about 100 pages in this HVAC grant. There's so many things that they all know. They, they did ask if you've ever received so, it. No, we haven't. We've we checked it. We're hoping we're going to get something. We don't know. There's no. There's nothing there saying it's a match. How much you're getting? If you're getting it, all it is applies to the state of the and I just follow up and get your information. I will. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I mean, because usually on those state grants, you know, and sometimes it's it's a it's a percentage. Or and sometimes it can be in um not necessarily all dollar amount. It can be in salaries of you know like what the time you put in for other people. You can use that. Um, so, I just wanted to point out also is that so if some of this capital is actually going to be board members, so if we allocated money, like let's say to the HVAC system, mm -hmm. because you have to have it, and then you, you get the state grant, so if we allocated $300,000, you end up with a grant for $200,000 on there. Mm -hmm. Because the capital is specific to a project, you can always, because now we won't have to spend the 300000 right. because you got a grant, you can come back and ask the council mm -hmm. to have that reappropriated mm -hmm. to another capital expense. Mm -hmm. It would be lost. Yes. It would be done in the past. Yes. Right. You can, it, it can be moved okay. or raised. Okay. That's, that's Thank you. So I, I'm looking at these items, right? All 11 of them. And John, you'll have a quote for the gym floor in here by the time it rolls this issue just came up in the floor. Unaware of the water infiltration, the, the action before it started rotting from underneath, and we didn't know until it started showing on the surface. Mm -hmm. We had to investigate where the water infiltration was coming, and uh, come to find out unexpectedly, and, uh, we put a roof on the building. We eliminated the interior drains. The roof used to drain on the inside. I remember that, yeah. It's not still on the ground. Uh, when we put the roof on, we got birds and feeders that we have to call birds and to sit uh -huh. on the side of the building. But when it rains, the gutters and leaders that the bird mouth is pouring directly on the double gym and two doors from the rear and going under the granite slab uh -huh. by the door and yeah. going back to the gym floor. We had no clue that was happening. Uh, yeah. uh, so, um, how, so, how was, will you, so will you have a cost to, to so be able to give? Or? We're going to front roll it again. Okay. All right. We are going to cut the asphalt. We're going to pipe the gutters and leaders out. We're going to pipe the bird mouth out. Okay. And and uh, I got three companies working right now on tools for preparing and refreshing. Okay. okay. Um, so when we're looking at these 11 things, I often hear the Board of Ed doesn't take care of their buildings, right? But in order for us to take care of our buildings, we need funding, right? And so now I'm seeing 11 issues, right, um, on here. And so I just think when we're talking about our capital budget, again, we want to tell that story. Of we want to talk, we want to take care of our buildings. This is the cycle. This is you know routine maintenance. I like that you even say you know, hey, we're putting the track on here. It's not completely deteriorated yet, but it's coming. So heads up, this is going to need to be done. So if we don't get it, it's it's almost like you have a little bit of a strategic plan for your capital, right? And so we may not get it done, but John, I really like your approach with this because we want to make sure all our new buildings and all of the things we have are well 
taken care of. So I thank you for your attention. Well, you have to remember, if you look at what we need done, mm -hmm. it, it's the old bill. It's age. Yeah. Seven, seven, yeah. seven of the 11 things on this list right. are age. Seven of 11 are age. Original. Original. So tell me about it. It's, we've pushed the equipment to their... To the limits. To their life. And, and, and unfortunately, you can't just change the equipment anymore because now with the state and federal regulations on the, the, uh, the type of refrigerant you can use, mm -hmm. you can't just supplement. You have to replace the entire system because that refrigerant is now outlawed. You can no longer use it like the style that's in Joe Harrison. So not only you replace the condenser, now you have to replace the battery or the oils too because mm -hmm. they work on a different type of refrigerant. It's, it's just a... Yeah, I get it. But it's a miracle that you got that much. Though, like, in your house, how often have you changed your refrigerator or your freezer? I just changed my refrigerator. So it's within the last 10 years? No, probably 30 because I live in a 19... No, it probably lasted since 1960. Refrigerators but they have, don't do that anymore. No? Mm -hmm. so, refrigerators have about a seven-year like span in my house. Seriously. To well, get that, like, that amount of time out of the refrigerator and freezer <laughs> from no, the... I what know. year was that? Go I can't guess past seven years what on year is the refrigerator. That yeah. Yeah. So, so, I have antique... Um, so it's like so brand new. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, so 72. Do the math. That's amazing that that's lasting that long. And if you that long. That's if they're not prepared, mm -hmm. you can get them cheaper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you can't get them repaired. Nobody wants to get them. So you end up buying them. I kind of want to highlight number eight on this. Um, yeah. It might be personal to me because like, I'm a big player at that school. Yeah. But for the girls' bathrooms, bathrooms. Mm -hmm. for all of them to reflect an issue with privacy is concerning to me because a lot of these girls, by the time they leave, they're menstruating for the first yeah. time. And to not have that privacy, I think, is. You know, well, I know that all of these are important. I just think this is a really important issue. Yeah. Thank you for calling it out. I didn't see that. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm it through that model lens of the fifth grader who's like, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions on capital? We know what our charge is for the ARPA. Yeah. We'll prioritize as a, as a group, administrative team, what we think is, you know, yep. of the highest priority and, and see where we go with ARPA, and then we'll see what we have left for capital. Mm -hmm. So, there. Scott, will you reach out to get us on the agenda for February 20th? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay, fantastic. And we will go together. If it, does anyone else want to go on February 20th? We'll have a party. Start six or seven. Mm -hmm. Our council meetings now start at six. 6.30? So February 20th at 6.30. I'll bring the popcorn. I guess 6.30. No, we're going to be there. I think this is, I think it's important. We'll go. If the girls are, I'm just going to say, if the girls have a basketball game, mom first, but otherwise. I'll, I'll be there. Okay. I'm Do you there. trust us telling the story? <laughs> You could be slipping, Scott, but I'll get you on the back end. <laughs> we'll tell the story. We need these freezers. Um, yeah, yeah. We do need the freezers, we and do. I think that's Take important. And the okay. bathrooms. Yeah. So Take what are what's next to do tonight? So we have options. We can we can take the number we presented and move forward. We as an administrative team can go back if you have a number that you would like to get to and we can start working on things to get to that number like a status quo. So we're looking for direction from you. Um, the next date is the 8th. I'm not available. That's okay. We could still meet on the 8th and, and Martha could have all the information. Um, if we went out the next week or we could do that as well. What is the deadline? To have this well, we're, we're, we're going to vote on it. We have, to, we, have to, we have to vote on it at our, at our February meeting 28th. because it has to be yeah. the town hall by February 28th. Yeah. Where should we? Oh, right. It's a leap year. Oh, right. 29th. It's a leap right. year. So we could have a, I have a grand day. I have a grandbaby due on March 4th. I certainly we hope it's not February 29th. <laughs> um, we could have a special meeting before. 
that we run another workshop before the what board. Is it, how does everybody oh, feel? But you just got to give us direction on where you want us mm -hmm. to go. How do you feel? I'd like, like to hear from the rest of the board. I mean, I know what my preference is, but I want to hear everyone else's voice. I'd like to punt personally. Give it another, give it another go. Look at the numbers. Talk maybe even internally. See what happens. See if we can come up something a little more spicier than six percent of whatever it is. It's well, four point one seven point. Oh, sorry. Downstairs two. voting. I'm sorry. Four seven two. I, I would like one more workshop just so I can build that value story, so I can try to figure out which numbers are most appealing. And Judy, can I lean on you a little bit for some of that? I, I got the numbers. If you got the story, I got the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a believer that we should ask for what we need and take what we get. So I, I think that when we cut our numbers before we even go to ask, that we are undercutting what we need for our students. And I, I'm a believer in going in with what we need. I, I agree. The worst thing we get told is no. At least we asked. The answer is no until you ask. Mm -hmm. You agree? And, and part of the story is, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Part of the story is, this is what we, this is what we need, and this is why. Um, and I think that when we, when we take away the ability to even put that out publicly, then we kind of do ourselves a disservice. So you're saying just go with, go with this now and not have another meeting? Well, I don't mind another it. meeting. That's, I'm not trying to avoid another meeting, but I, the, my personal opinion mm -hmm. always has been, when I've attended a meeting, even as a townsperson, you know, that I want to know why, and and if that's the number that we need, then everyone should know that. And then if we get less, which we may, we probably will, um, it's okay, because we've still said, our kids are important, <clears throat> our staff is important, and this is what we need to continue offering the education that we've been able to offer here in North Brantford. And if, if in fact it doesn't come in at that number, we'll we'll make it work because it always does. It would, there's always a way, but to go in undercutting the number that Martha and Scott have brought to us, I, I feel like that's not the way to go. I'll try to prepare something for um, next Thursday then, so we can see where our, our opportunities of savings lie because there's some already built in, right? Um, some areas that might be our um, soft spots that might be of question. Um, and then I will start building the absolute dollars we need, like in, in the budget, an increase of right off the cuff of $2 million is for special education. There's another, you know, six, 681000 for contractual uh, staff. Those are things that don't go away. Those are the things we should say, hey, right off the right off the cuff, this is our our increase, and we can't change these, but we also want to say, hey, these these items did decrease. We're well aware of this. So how do we again, how do we tell that story and why we want this money? It's not that we just need it, but why do we need it? Why is it important? And how are these like why is that social worker who was funded by a grant so important? What does she do? How how are those kids gonna be impacted if that person is gone right like that's what I want to say and then you know then then we sell it and if it doesn't go then then it doesn't go but I just want to I want to try something different this year if everyone it can be tolerant and patient with me we've got nothing to lose I'm sorry I interrupted you no, no, that's your right. opinion no, okay. the way to go forward so I, she let me, she for she, clarification, yeah, she I don't, she I don't she understand. She's very soft-spoken. I know. It's not like a meeting. It says, <laughs> okay. it says there's no need for a meeting. OK. Oh. That's what I hear. Oh, I just said I wanted a meeting because well, I wanted to be able to just support I heard you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, she said she, she said she's not opposed to another meeting. It's just no. Right. I'm going to go through this point. and I will have questions. I yeah, that's so. I can email them or we can, you know. I'm just Madam Chair, what do you want to do? I, I don't care either way. I have homework either way. It doesn't matter. I, I just sometimes a discussion is better than me emailing back and forth. Not that I want to waste anybody's time, but this is important. Like, we could go in half-heartedly and get a zero, or we could go in and really, like, I'll feel much better getting nothing if I know I'm prepared and ready to roll and I have answers to their questions. And if 
if I could convince Rose to come and, ha and, and let her hear our methodology and strategy, and she could poke holes in it a little bit so we're better prepared when we go through the whole town council, I would appreciate that time. Um, so we meet yeah, but, but Okay, so let me try to understand this. Are we staying with the 7.2? You're going to go back and then next week come in with focused questions, or do you want us to I'm gonna go do my to status quo? I want you guys to do nothing right now. Now it's time for us to do our homework. Those on the board That's are going to through and ask any questions. I'm going to play with the numbers a little bit so I can see what was cut, what we what we really need, and opportunities of possible savings, and then have questions against that. So you all don't have to do anything now. It's, it's our turn to do our homework and ask questions and figure out how to present this best to get the best outcome. So, okay. no, so, you don't have anything no, to so do. So then my, I led off with next Thursday, I had a conflict. Okay. I don't have to be there, no. but I'm saying the following week. I need Martha, though. But No, I know that. But okay. I'm saying the following week, if there's an open date prior to our board meeting, if you wanted to reschedule it, we could do it then, prior to our board meeting. Mm -hmm. Do you want more time, though, to think about it? Yeah. Well, might mean so the following week, we have the meeting on that Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we have Monday night, Tuesday night. I'll look at the basketball schedule. And... And then I can email everyone tomorrow and see availability so our of that week prior to that. So I, we won't know the basketball schedule yet because they'll go into Shoreline. And I just don't, I, this is so... I know it's Shoreline days. You do? Oh, thank you. We'll know the day. When's the board event meeting? 27th. 15th. The 15th. The Wednesday is Valentine's Day. Always the third Thursday. No, but I'm just saying that's Valentine's Day. 22nd, I think, right? Is it the 22nd? Yeah, I have the 22nd. Yeah, we have a week in between. Yeah. It's the 22nd? I have the 22nd. Yeah, okay, so we would have a full week and we'd have that next week to meet to go over. Would everyone like a little bit more time, so more than a week? It's up to you. I don't care. I Yeah, let's take next week off and make it the following week. All right. All right, so I'll get dates out to everybody for that following week. In worst case scenario, the week prior to the short week of the word meeting, so we know. Anyone who has questions, can you um, email Scott no, and Martha and yeah. the whole board so that we're all getting the information yeah. together? Perfect. Okay. So we're seeing the 15th at 6.30. No, no, no he's going to send I'm us an I'm email. Board. I'm checking oh. all calendars. Okay. And everything. To see what's the, okay. And then yes. I'm going to put it out sure. to you. But no for next week. Yes. But no okay. For correct. Next week. Okay. Perfect. Thank correct. You. So none on the eighth. Cancel nothing. Else. Cancel the eighth, and we'll do it the following week. Okay. okay. All right. Are we done? Motion to adjourn. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Thank All you. in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.